Graphic designers are a breed all their own, and Neville Brody is certainly a fine example of that. He was born in Southgate, London on April 23, 1957. He then, as a child, attended Minchenden for A-level art. As he grew older, he went to Hornsey College of Art and then on to London College of Printing. Teachers thought his work was a bit uncommercial. They didn't really appreciate his style because his biggest influence was from the punk era, era and they didn't feel that that was very appropriate. His artistic style led him to a lot of trouble. In fact, one time he was almost kicked out of school for a stamp he made with the queen's face turned sideways. He was quoted one time as saying, If Tudor said they liked something I was doing, I would go away and change it, because such approval then made me think there must be something wrong with the work. He didn't want anyone's approval. One of his biggest claims to fame was the Face magazine. It was started with the new way of looking at typography and layout. Then he went on and Thames and Hudson published books based off of his work, and the volumes became bestsellers and Brody's work was featured in an exhibit at the Victoria and Albert Museum. He began his own design practice called Research Studios. It then expanded into several branches in Europe. He also co-founded Font Fawn, Font Font, a typeface library with Eric Spikerman. His design firm worked with clients like Nike, British Airway, Macromedia, Dutch Bank, Armani, BMW, and NBC. Brody also helped found Font Work and Font Shop. He went from a rebel to setting up for a rebellion. I chose Brody for several reasons. To be honest, I really didn't know anything about any of the artists that I looked at on the list. But Neville Brody's name stuck out to me because my youngest son's name is Brody, so I picked him. As I reached search through his work, though, I, it was very impressive. Um, he seems to be a do-as-you-please type of person, doesn't really care if somebody doesn't like him or what he's doing. Sometimes we all kind of need to be able to feel like that. His work seems to just pop out at you. It has very elaborate colors and interesting fonts. One of the fav my favorite fonts that he did is the Blur Fun. It's bold. It's carefree. It just gives you that whole carefree attitude. Brody was also chosen by the Times Magazine to work on updating their main news section. He used a bold sans serif for headings, but this work led to the creation of Times New Roman. Some of my favorite work of his is the record covers that he did for Fetish Records. He designed pieces for several bands between 1980 to 1982, and most of this was done before digital time, so they had to actually paste together cutouts and film overlays, and then type had to be done by a professional typesetter. So a lot different than the way it would be designed today. Some designs then actually use 3D work and then they use photographs to cover them. He did the Bongo Zebra cover or Zebra Club album. And he also did, um, obviously, covers for the Face magazine. The Bongo Zebra Club um, is was done in 1982. It has this hot pink cover with black stripes that look like zebra stripes. It's Zebra Club, but the stripes are really from the tiger face that's in the center of the album. This giant Z reminds me of Zorro leaving his mark on things. And then the rest of the title was just done in this block font, but it stands out because it's white. He seemed to like to do black and white and this little bit of color in it. There's two wavy purple lines on either side that just kind of brings it all into a symmetrical style. It's very bold, it's, it's very bright, and it just catches your eye with all the different um, designs and colors on it, yet it's not overpowering. The next one piece that I really liked was one of the magazine covers for the face. It has David Bowie on it. David Bowie is, like, I'm a fan of David Bowie for his movies, for his music, 
for anything that he did. This cover was from October 1984. And like I said, I really like David Bowie. Part of the reason why I think it's cool that Neville Brody did this one is because David Bowie always had this devil may care attitude and it kind of matches the way that Brody thinks. So I found that rather interesting that that was the cover that popped out to me. Why is Neville Brody's way of thinking important? I learned personally through rough circumstances that you have to do what you like and is best for you. Sometimes you have to just go with what you think needs to be done, what you feel needs to be done. And that's kind of the way that Brody thinks. He came by it very naturally and just seems to do what he wants. And if people don't like it, well, then they don't like it. It's okay to do what you see fit as long as you do it correctly. And by that I mean you can think this way, but you still need to treat people like humans and nice. Do it with dignity and with style and just know that you're not always going to please everyone. So it doesn't do any good to try, but just be nice. Be yourself and then it's all going to come and fall into place. It's not going to be a problem. But um, there comes a point in your life where you must stop trying to please everyone and pleasing yourself first. That took me a while to learn that, but Brody, on the other hand, seemed to have been born with this attitude. And I think that's why his reputation is what it is, and he is what he is to the design world today. My only hope is that I can get to the point, or at least close to it someday. Thank you.